Okay, this is my my live stream for R, and I have just set this all up on Windows. As some of you know, I've been on a MacBook, and I still am using a MacBook. I'm just trying to make a different workflow right now. So my workflow is going to be record and do all of the programming on a PC with Windows. And as soon as the record is done, it'll drop it right into my MacBook folder, and then I can throw it into Final Cut Pro and edit it. But the goal is to be able to do more, not necessarily live edits, but the uh, minimal amount of editing in general. So I'm trying to streamline that. Slowly but surely it's getting there. I'm just practicing right now with, with um, my PC setup. All right, so that being said, let me talk to you about what we're going to talk about today. We are going to be using R and R Studio tools to unzip a directory full of files automa automatically. So let me go ahead and show you an example set of files. Um, literally, I just put this PC together and I'm using it. And so I'm downloading all these things I need. As you can see in my downloads folder, I have uh, test.zip and then a few other zip files in there. Now I don't really need these anymore, this is just an example, but imagine you had 50 or 60 zip files, or maybe somebody at your work center is sending you zip files every day daily and they've accumulated to 30 for the whole month and you need to unzip each one. Well, instead of going to the right click, extract all, clicking all these buttons and waiting, you know, and then having all these pop-ups come up for 30 different files, we're gonna do this automatically with R. So this is a little bit of a deviation from statistics and machine learning, things like that. But these tools are super helpful that I figured I'd throw this in there in the mix just to show you how to do it because it's really simple, honestly. And with that being said, let's do a couple of preliminary things just to get you started. You might need, you need the URL or the address of these the location of, or the path, right? And in Windows, you have the path as just plain download. So that's not really gonna help you too much. You can right click on the files that are in this location and click on properties. And then we can see down here where it says location, you can usually get an idea of the location that way. We can go ahead and copy this entire location here, uh, highlight it and do control C. Let's just keep that. So now that we have this, let's go back to our R Studio and what you're gonna to notice too is that I actually have R uh, version 4.0 installed. If you don't, that's fine. As long as you have a three point something version, this should work. So I'm gonna go ahead and go down to line two here. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. So as you can see, I'm gonna create a, uh, a directory. So we just, we just found that, so we'll call it my directory and we're gonna set that equal to our path. But we wanna put it in quotes as well. So keep that in quotes. And then finally, we don't need the C colon, so delete that. And re remember, backslashes like this are actually escape characters, so you can either put a double backslash for each one, or you can convert them all to forward slashes. I'm gonna go ahead and convert them all to forward slashes. And you don't need one at the very end here, so that's fine. So we've got that, that's fine. So that's a, a, a placeholder for our directory. Now, what we wanna do is I'm gonna show you how to download a tool that's gonna to help you called Plier. So click on Packages down here, and then click on Install, and just type in, make sure your repository is CRAN, type in PLYR, PLYR, and it's the Plier library. Now, mine's gonna to install to the default library, which is my 4.0. You might have a three point something in there, that's fine. So just click on Install. It's gonna take a few seconds to install and then you should be good to go. Make sure installed dependencies is also checked. That way, if it requires other libraries, it'll go ahead and download those as well. All right. Now that we have that, yours should be loaded by now. We're gonna add that library. So library, PLYR, and do control enter on that to load the library. Control enter on my directory. You can see on the right hand side down here you have my directory stored my shortcut keys add a minus and plus and things like that onto the r so don't worry about that i just delete them okay so let's get going here we want to get a list of those zip files right so let's just create a, a list called zip file and this will be the list of files so a convenient 
thing that R has built in is list.files. So we're going to use that function and we're going to say, okay, what's the path? Where do we want to look at those files? We're going to say path is equal to, and our path is our my directory path. So we can make that into my directory. No problem there. And we want it to only list files that are zip files. So let's, let's add a pattern. Our pattern is equal to, in quotes, star.zip. So the star, if you don't know, stands for basically a wild card, but it's, it's as many letters or characters to the left of that star, or to the left of the, the period, actually. Um, it'll grab as long as it has a .zip extension at the end. That's all that's saying. I'm sure you've seen that before. All right, so then we'll do, um, full, we need to put in full names equals true. Full dot names. That way it gets the entire, so because when you're doing this, we can do, it'll actually just do users, mark G, downloads, slash, file name one dot zip. Instead of file name one dot zip, file name two dot zip, file name three dot zip, we're gonna have it have the entire path. So that's why full names equals true. It's usually a general bet safer to do because if, if, if the function doesn't actually know to use a local directory, then it'll take care of it for you because it's gonna give you the entire path. And I'll show you that in just a second. So on number six, I'll hit command, I'll hit control enter. Uh, let me zoom back out for you. Now you can see up here on the right hand side, I have zip file, it's got three files in there. We can go down to our command or our console and just type in zip underscore files or file, hit enter and you can see the entire path inside of quotes. Users, mark G, downloads, all of them are in there. So that's what it did. Pretty simple, straightforward. Now that we have that, now we're gonna use this cool powerful thing called you know the plier package. We're gonna use L, dply, which stands for kind of like uh, laply, deplier, and laply is, hey, let's apply a function or a set of rules to every single thing in the list and then bring it all back together. So the plier function and the plier package is really meant for us taking like a list of objects, doing something to each one, and then putting them back together. That's all we're doing. It's real simple. So we're going to set our data is equal to and our data is actually equal to our zip files. We want to send in our zip files, but now we're going to say, what do we want to do with these zip files? We're going to apply a function, so the dot fun, and then the function is called unzip, and that's just part of the R uh, base package, so you don't have to download anything for this. I don't think it's part of plier, but it's, it's, it could be. I'm not 100% sure on that. And then we have to give it a directory to actually unzip these two. So we're just going to do the same directory, so I'm going to call it my directory again. And that should do it. So let's go ahead and control enter on that. Actually, let me show you my downloads again. So you should see my downloads here. I'll kind of, I'll try to bring it up quickly when I run this to see it working. So let's go ahead and do control enter on that and I'll do alt tab. And you can see it was that quick. It actually just did that. So I have three new files here that were all unzipped really fast and all automated. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's extremely simple to do. I hope that you can find R and R Studio to be useful, not only for your statistics or any type of program that you, you want to do, but use it as a tool in your work area to automate the boring stuff, automate the boring tasks. Anyways, if you find this helpful, uh, please uh, like and subscribe. But more, more importantly, if you can share this on social media, that'd be great. Share it on Twitter, Facebook, anything that you have. Let's see. Oh, and finally, if you thought this was helpful, there's an actual playlist that I'll bring up, and it's got practical R for business. It's not really meant as statistics or anything like that. So let me bring it up here. So this right here is my playlist. It's got Flex Dashboard. It's got R Studio Shortcut Tips. But these particular videos and tutorials are meant for somebody that's in the business realm that wants to automate some of the boring stuff. So that's it. And this was my... First live stream on the new computer. I was rushing for it. I'm not quite set up completely the way I want to, but I hope that you found this helpful. And again, please see you guys next time by uh, subscribing. Have a good one.